can tell me when I'm supposed to start. Okay, um, welcome to uh, the second session of, of the day. All right, um, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to introduce Ling Xuan Ma from Purdue University. Ling Xuan got his uh, PhD under the direction of Mel Hoxter uh, in 2014 from the University of Michigan and uh, has uh, taken off and uh, while he was talented as a student has only become even more talented since. Um, uh, now at Purdue University, he uh, uh, was awarded a prestigious uh, Sloan Fellowship um, and uh, on his website, you can see has already over 40 papers and preprints, right? Um, uh, it is uh, um, a real pleasure to hear him speak about direct sum ends and uh, uh, take it away, Ling Xuan. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Uh, it, it's my great pleasure to speak. Uh, and sorry, I, I, my other device have some issues, so I cannot, uh, uh, you cannot see me, but I'm just using my iPad right now. Uh, but after the lecture, I will, uh, I, I'm happy to handle any questions. So, all right. So uh, the title of, uh, okay. So this lecture, I'm gonna, the lecture that was assigned to me was about the sum and of regular rings. Uh, actually, I feel uh, a large part of the materials, a large part of the lecture uh, was already contained in this uh, Kevin's notes and uh, Neil's uh, notes. So uh, I'm just gonna, uh, perhaps I'm gonna uh, do this question from a, a slight a different point of view. So uh, let me change my title slightly. Uh, so the title of my talk is gonna be, uh, the, this lecture uh, will focus on strongly uh, F regular rings and direct sum and of regular rings. All right, so, okay. Uh, so to start it off, let me uh, just quickly remind you uh, some basic concepts. So. Uh, so first of all, throughout my talk, uh, all rings are, um, oops. Commutative, uh, no theory with multiplicative identity one. So I'm not gonna uh, move beyond this no theory setup. And uh, so we will focus on rings of character P. Uh, and uh, so if uh, R has a positive characteristic P, uh, so then there is a, a natural uh, Frobenius endomorphism. Um, uh, then we have a natural uh, Venus endomorphism F, which goes from R to R, uh, and of course it sends little R to R to the P, and uh, sometimes we want to uh, we will iterate this map F to the E, uh, and then the map is gonna send R little R to little R to the P to the E, and uh, at least in my lecture I'm gonna use a notation uh, you probably already seen in uh, in Kevin's uh, lecture. That is, uh, it is important that we will, uh, we need to distinguish the source and target of the Frobenius map. And so the notation I'm gonna use is, okay. So here's a notation. So I'm gonna use uh, F E lower star of R to denote uh, the target of the Frobenius. Okay, so in other words, uh, instead of writing down this uh, Fe that map goes from R to R, uh, so we're gonna uh, view the Frobenius map Fe uh, that goes from R to Fe lower star of R. Okay, and so uh, let me just quickly remind you. So in this notation, uh, uh, you know this one is isomorphic. Uh, Okay, this is the same as R as in the bidding group, but the R module 
if I view this copy uh, as a module over the uh, the left, the uh, the source, uh, maybe let me just even write it down. So, so elements in F E lower star R are denoted F E lower star little r, right? Where little r inside r and uh, the r module structure. Um, on F E lower star is defined uh, using the following. So uh, if you have R1 times F E lower star R2, it's gonna be F E lower star R1 P to the E times R2. Okay, so this is the, uh, the Fabinius. Okay, but on the other hand, let me also point it out. So. Uh, this one is also isomorphic to R as, as a ring, obviously, because it's just, in some sense, it's just R, but I just use this awkward, a little bit awkward notation. So uh, this is the same as R as a ring. So, you know, it sends F E lower star R back to R. So that's the ring isomorphism. Okay, so uh, now uh, here's the definition. I believe you also seen this in Kevin's talk. So a ring R, uh, of characteristic P is called a finite um, if for some or equivalently all uh, E bigger than zero, uh, F e lower star r uh, is a finitely generative uh, r module. So in other words, uh, F finite means the Frobenius map is a finite morphism. Okay, so uh, it's I will left the, uh, I will leave this as an exercise uh, 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 to show that. Uh, this definition, in this definition, you can require this for some E or you require this for all uh, E bigger than zero. It, 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 it's the same thing, um, it's not hard. So, but let me just give you, okay. Let me just uh, mention some uh, examples of F finite. So, <clears throat> so for example, uh, if you just have a field, uh, K, uh, a field K of uh, characteristic P uh, is F finite, right? If, so, I mean, K to the one over K uh, is a finite dimensional vector space over K. So it's a finite extension. So this is because, well, I, didn't mention that, but hopefully you already see this in the earlier lectures. Uh, you can, well, at least when R is reduced, uh, you can view this uh, Frobenius map as the natural inclusion from R to R to the one over P to the E. And so uh, for field, uh, you know, the one over P to the E is just the, the field extension. So, uh, so for example, a perfect field or algebraic closed field are always uh, at finite. Uh, and it will, uh, I leave it as an exercise that, uh, oh, hopefully you have seen this before, that uh, if, you, if R is F finite, then um, all rings, okay, this is, maybe let me just write it down here. So this will be an exercise that if uh, R is F finite, so then the localization of R are F finite, the quotient of R are F finite, uh, adjoining a power series or, or polynomial variables are finite. So in summary, <clears throat> so uh, for all rings essentially finite type over R, R will be F finite. So if R is F finite, then uh, all rings essentially finite type over R are also at finite, okay? 
because you can join a bunch of variables and then you modulo some ideal and then you localize invert some multiplicative system, all these procedure preserve the at finite property. And let me also, for example, so then, I mean, uh, you can start with a perfect field and then you'll get lots of examples, all the uh, essentially finite type algebras over perfect field. One, just a comment. Uh, you say that a field in characteristic P is a finite if and only if, uh, if you consider the extension of K by K over one over P is, fi is a finite dimensional K vector space. But then you can also say that uh, K is a finite if and only if K is a finite dimensional K to the P vector space. Both things are equivalent, and maybe this is that's a right, that's more right, direct right. point yeah, of yeah, view. Yeah. yeah. Or if and only maybe this is a more straight point of view if, if you want to avoid P rules at this at this point. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. You can also say uh, K is a finite dimensional uh, KP uh, vector space. Okay, so <clears throat> are there any other questions, comments? And so the other thing I want to point out, just want to uh, give you plenty of examples of uh, affinite rings. So complete, uh, complete local rings uh, of character P, of course, with um, affinite residue fields are affinite. So this also follows from one of the uh, the exercise. This um, and uh, you know basically you uh, uh, you use the Cohen structure theorem. So uh, you you write your this complete ring as a quotient of the power series ring over a coefficient field. And so as I said, uh, adjoining a power series variable will preserve the at finite uh, assumption. So so this is going to be fun. But anyway, uh, this is an uh, exercise. Um, can... OK. So uh, and uh, you know, throughout my lecture, when we talk about strongly f-regular, uh, just go back to this title. When we talk about strongly f-regular rings, I'm going to assume uh, the rings are always uh, f-finite, just for, I just want to avoid this technical uh, issue. Um, so, and there are some results saying affinite rings are, are nice. For example, um, there, I, I, I'm gonna just state it in words. So Coons have proved that affinite rings are excellent in the sense of Grossendieck. And uh, Gabber has shown that affinite rings are homomorphic image of affinite regular rings. So these rings are, so in particular, for example, they admit canonical modules, et cetera. But these rings are not, I mean, are not pathological. Okay. And now let me uh, recall you. I think this already uh, shows up in Kevin's lecture, but because uh, this is a key concept that I will uh, study. Oh, did I label this? So I didn't label this. Let me just remove this. Okay. Okay. So here's a uh, definition. Uh, an affinite ring R of character P, of course, um, is called uh, strongly F regular if um, <clears throat> for every C inside R. Uh, not in any minimal prime of R there exists E bigger than zero such that uh, the map uh, R to uh, FE lower star R Sending one to F E lower star C splits as a map of R modules. Okay, so.
So uh, this is going to be the, the definition. <clears throat> uh, and so clearly, uh, let me just point it out. So, okay, let me, let's perhaps stick with the definition uh, a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, the definition requires that uh, for any uh, C not in any minimal prime, the map R to F lower star R sending one, so this map sending one to F lower star C, this map splits as a map of uh, R modules. So in particular, let's just try some simple uh, case. If you take C equals to one, let's see what happens. If you take C equals to one, then the map is gonna be one goes to one, F lower star one, or, right? So this is just, if you take C equals to one, this is a natural Frobenius map. So in particular, let me just say remark. So um, strongly F regular rings uh, are always F split. All right, so F split just means the Frobenius map splits, like uh, R to F lower star R sending one to one uh, splits. Okay, so, uh, and in particular, So whenever the Frobenius map is split or even much weaker, uh, as long as the Frobenius map is injected, it's an easy exercise that you can show the R is reduced. So, uh, so in particular, strongly F regular rings are always reduced. They are always reduced. Okay, so, and remember, uh, well, I mentioned this earlier, uh, well, I didn't write it down, but, uh, you can view the Frobenius map uh, as the natural inclusion from R to R to the one over P to the E when R is reduced. So, and so since here, uh, all the ring, uh, so the rings we consider, the ring we define are automatic, will, they will be automatically reduced. So this condition, if you don't, if, if this is in particular, if you first see this, or if you don't like the F U lower star notation, so this condition is really saying what? It's saying, if you identify this one with R to the one over P to the E, uh, so then this condition is really saying uh, strongly F regular. This is really saying what? It's saying like the map, the condition you want to put is that uh, for every C, you know, not in any minimal prime, not in minimal prime, not in any, so. Right, so the map, uh, the natural inclusion R to R to the one over P to the E. Well, but I'm not gonna use the natural inclusion. I'm gonna send in one to C to the one over P to the E splits as a map of R module. Okay, so this is completely equivalent to this. It's just a different notation, but same thing. Right, so F lower star R is identified with R to the one over P to the E. And under this identification, uh, this F e lower star C is identified with C to the minus P to the E. So um, saying this map splits is the same as saying this this map splits. Okay, and of course, but of course, the only small point I want to make is that if you want to use R to the minus P to the E notation, your ring better be reduced. So, but it it, it is so strongly F regular rings are always reduced. So uh, there's no ambiguity in using this one over P to the E notation. But uh, throughout my lecture. Uh, I would I prefer to use this F e lower star R notation because it's so first of all it's compatible with Kevin's lecture and secondly it's going to be more compatible with the sort of the the modern language that in this uh, community the character P community algebra. Okay, so uh, here's the definition. So I gave you the definition of strongly uh, strongly F regular rings, and the first remark is that uh, they are always uh, F split. In particular, they are always reduced. And uh, so the first lemma, let me just prove, uh, is that, uh, so uh, for, for local rings, uh, you, can, you can actually say more. So they are not only reduced, uh, they are actually domain. So let me just state this. So I let RMK, be an F finite and 
strongly regular local ring. Um, tells you P. Um, so then R is an integral domain. Okay, so let's prove uh, why is this. So uh, since R is reduced, uh, to show is a domain, you, you only need to show there's only one minimal prime. It is enough to show R has only one minimal prime. Okay, so now suppose you have you have more than one. So so that P1. So we're gonna prove by contradiction, we are assuming you have more than one minimal prime, one P1, Pn, you know, minimal primes uh, of R, and let's say, and it's at least two, let's just try to uh, arrive at a contradiction. So the idea is that you want to, okay, so, so the only condition you have is the splitting condition. So you want to split up some elements not inside all the minimal primes. So you have to pick this element sort of cleverly, okay? So uh, now I we, we pick, so now you pick. So for each minimal prime i, uh, you pick fi inside all these other minimal prime, but uh, it's not in the pi, it's not in the i minimal prime. Okay, so then uh, if you look at the sum of all these FIs, um, so this so this is not so then this is not I claim this is not contain this is not in any minimal prime. Right, because I hope uh, this is easy to see because you, this is basically by the way you choose all these FIs. So, um, uh, for example, let's just look at P1. So F1 is not inside P1, uh, but all the other like F2, F3, Fn, so all the others will be inside P1. So, uh, so there's only one element not inside P1. Uh, so the sum is gonna be not inside uh, P1 and you do this for, other eyes too. Okay, so you we you you choose this element not in minimal prime of R, and so now by the assumption, uh, you can uh, you can pick some E such that uh, split this element. Okay, so let's just write write it down. Uh, since R is strongly, I will use F as F R to be a shorthand for strongly F regular. So since R is strongly F regular, uh, you um, okay, so there exists uh, E bigger than zero. Uh, and an R linear map. From F e lower star R to R, uh, such that this, oh, let me call this map phi, such that phi sends this element to one. So phi of f e lower star is one. Okay, so this is just the, the concrete meaning that, you know, the map r to f e lower star r sending one to f e lower star of this element splits. So I'm just writing down. So split means there's a map back uh, sending this element to one. Okay, so now let's just try to arrive at a contradiction. So we so so far we haven't used any of this. Uh, so uh, I mean, so so far we haven't used the local condition on R, and now I'm going to use the fact that R is a local ring. Okay. So um, so uh, well, so okay. So first of all, this map is additive. All right. So this is certainly equals to V. F e lower star of F i. 
Okay, and so now, uh, of course, this is equals to one. Remember, this is by our uh, assumption. And so you have a sum of elements, uh, which is a unit. And so now I'm gonna use the fact that I'm working in a local ring. And so uh, at least one of these elements must be a unit because if otherwise all of these will be contained in a unique maximum ideal, so this can be a unit. And so, uh, so since RMK is local, uh, at least one of this phi fe lower star fi is a unit. Okay, and so therefore, uh, well, without loss of generality, uh, let's assume we may assume just um, phi fe lower star f one is u, which is a unit. Okay, and now where is the contradiction coming from? So remember we have uh, at least two minimal primes. So this this little n is n is like this two. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uh, pick an element. Uh, okay. So let me just write it down. So but since f1 times f2, so this is equal to zero. So this is, uh, again, by the way we choose this element. So I choose this f1, f2, f, fn, such that their sum is not inside any minimal prime, but if you take the product of any two of them, you get zero. And so the reason is that if you, let's just look at f1, f2, f1 is in all the minimal primes except p1 and f2 is in all the minimal all the other minimal primes except p2 so f1 f2 is inside all the minimal primes but r is reduced so the intersection of the minimal primes is zero so if you take if you take f1 times f2 or more generally you'll take the product of any two of the fi's you get zero so f1 f2 uh, is uh, zero okay so so then well, you almost see the contradiction. So we have, okay, so the, uh, so now I'm gonna, you look at U. So this U is this phi of uh, F E lower star F1. So you just think about what is U times F2. So, oops, sorry. All right, so, okay, so let me just write it down. So U is by our definition, U is phi of, F e lower star F1, okay, uh, times F2. But phi is an R linear map, right? So phi is an R linear map that goes from F e lower star R to R. And so I multiplication by F2 outside, so you can pull this F2 inside. So this is phi F2 times F e lower star F1. And so now what is F2 times uh, F e lower star F1? Well, this is, remember there's a Frobenius uh, FE lower star here. So when you have F2 times FE lower star of something, uh, if you want to pull the F2 inside FE lower star, you have to raise it to P to the E. So this is phi of FE lower star F2 to the P to the E times F1. Okay, but now this is zero because F1, F2 is zero, so F1 times F2 to the anything is zero. So this is phi of F lower star zero, which is zero. So this is a contradiction. Okay, because uh, U is a unit and uh, F2, we, we suppose F, I mean, we begin with F2, not, not zero. So this is a contradiction. Okay, so I do this uh, little lemma here, basically just to, uh, well, first of all, show you like for local rings, uh, strongly F regular rings are better, they are domains. And we'll see later that actually, actually like they are always normal, but uh, let's just stick with domain for the moment. And also, you know, I want to uh, get you familiar with this uh, FE lower star uh, language because uh, it's, um, it's useful. Okay, any questions? <laughs>
Sorry, I cannot see the chat. If, uh, if, uh, someone, if, if you have questions on the chat, maybe the organizers can, uh, can remind me, but yeah. But feel free to just uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask questions. Okay, so, uh, so okay, so let's just uh, we define strongly f regular rings. Uh, the maps like R to f e lower star R sending uh, for any c like sending f, uh, for, okay. So for any c, there exists e such that the map sending one to f e lower star c splits. And the excuse me, of, excuse me. There is a question in the chat asking yep. why strongly f regular implies reduced. Right, so let me just repeat that part. So uh, if R is strongly F regular, uh, so the condition is that for every C, for every C not in min any minimal prime of R, uh, this map splits. So in particular, the map from R to F lower star R sending one to F lower star one. So this map better be splits for some E, okay? And so, uh, well, so, this means the natural Frobenius map is split. So in particular, to, to, I mean, to make sure that this map splits, it better be injected. And it's fairly easy to see. Actually, I think I leave it as an exercise. If the Frobenius map is injective, then the ring is reduced. This is, well, you'll see that it's, it's not a hard exercise, uh, but anyway, okay. Any other question? Okay, so we have this definition. Uh, there's an easy remark that the F regular implies, the strong F regular implies F split and they are always reduced. And now for local rings, you can do a little bit better. Uh, these rings are always, uh, uh, the strong F regular local rings are always uh, domains. Okay, so uh, the next thing, because we want to, uh, we want to study strong F, I mean, we want to use, so basically the, Go of my lecture is that I want to use this theory of strongly F regular rings to, to study this, uh, well, to prove the direct sum and of regular rings are uh, co Macaulay or whatever. So this is like the final goal of this, of this lecture. And so we want to study some basic properties of strongly F regular rings, first of all. Okay, so here's a lemma, the second lemma. Um, so it says strongly F regular ring is a local property. So, so let R be an F finite uh, ring of character P. Then R is uh, strongly F regular if and only if RP is strongly F regular for every P uh, inside spec, for every prime. Item. Okay. So, oh, by the way, let me just make a comment. So, perhaps you have uh, learned in this Neil's, uh, Neil's uh, or maybe Kevin's lecture that so there's also a notion of weekly F regular. So, well, obviously, because of the name that we, we, we define them so strongly F regular always implies a uh, weekly uh, F regular. So weekly F regular is defined in terms of tight closure. And uh, so uh, I actually, in my lecture, I leave it as an exercise to, uh, well, I will ask you to show that strongly F regular rings are always weekly F regular. So this is indeed a stronger notion, but you can see that, so, so for example, this lemma, uh, this lemma is a, uh, is a, is, it's like one reason at least like why uh, strongly F regular rings like, you know, behaves like better. Oh, of course it is conjectured that the weak F regular, strongly F regular, they are ultimately, they should be all equivalent, but we, we still don't know that. And so this lemma indicates the strongly F regular rings are some sort of like easier to study because it is indeed a local property. Well, for weakly F regular rings, uh, we still don't know whether uh, they localize it well, right? So. I hope you have seen that uh, open question probably, or somebody mentioned that before. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
to check strong F regular, uh, to, to, to check something, some, uh, some ring is strongly F regular, uh, is really uh, check it locally for, for any prime. Okay. So let's uh, prove this. Uh, so, okay, so there are two directions you have to show. So, um, let's first, first, let's, let, let's, um, okay. So let's suppose R is strongly regular. So suppose R is uh, strongly regular. Um, okay, I want to show all the localizations are strongly F regular. So let P1, P2, Pn uh, be the minimal primes. R. Okay, so I okay. So now I fix a prime p, uh, and I want to show. Let's say I want to show R p is strongly F regular, and so now we 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 want to use the definition. It is enough. Okay, so let me just say. So oops, what's happening? Okay, so so to show R local as a p. It's strongly F regular. Let's just think about the definition. What we need to show, uh, well, we need to show for any little c, I mean, maybe I should, I should say like, for any c not inside any minimal prime of R local as a p, like, so any c whose image In our local as a p, uh, is not in any minimal prime of R p. Right. So you need to show for any c uh, like this, uh, there exists e bigger than zero, uh, and an RP linear map from F e lower star RP back to RP, uh, sending F e lower star C back to one. Okay, so this is definition. So to show something is strong F regular, I basically just copy the definition for you. You need to show exactly this thing, okay? All right, so now what's the, uh, there's only like one, oh, okay, this is the easy direction, by the way. So the only small subtlety that you have to think about is that, okay, so if you can, if, if this little c is not inside any minimal prime of r, it's not inside this p1 to pn, if this is not inside any minimal prime of r, you can do this, you can by the, you can, because we assume r is from a factor, you can pick a splitting from f lower star r back to r, sending f lower star c to one. And you just localize that map. It induces a map from Fe lower star R local as a P to R local as a P. Okay. So if this C is actually not inside any minimal prime of R, this is this is obvious. You just you have a map on the on the level of R, and then you localize that map. That's pretty straightforward. But the only, as I said, there's a small subtlety here is that we are only assuming the C is not in any minimal prime of R local as a P. So what are the minimal primes of R locus of P? Those, those correspond to the minimal primes of R that are contained in P. So there could be some minimal primes that are not inside P. So this is the only small side of this. So, you, so, the, so, uh, so the claim is that you, know, you, you want to avoid those cases because if your C is inside some minimal prime of R, so you can't apply your assumption to, you know, to split C off on the R level. Okay, but this is not a problem because uh, the idea is that you can always replace C by some other, uh, you know, you can, you can replace C, uh, oops, sorry. So the idea is that you can replace C by something else whose image in R looks as P are the same, but uh, the other thing is not inside any minimal prime of R. Okay, so let me just give the details. So um, the claim is that uh, we may assume uh, C is not in any 
minimal primal bond. Okay, so let's explain why is this true. Uh, so, so for suppose uh, C is contained in let's say P1, Pi, but not in say uh, the other, right? Not in the other minimal primes. Right, so I mean, remember, I'm assuming P1 to Pn are all the minimal primes. And so for example, if you pick your C, like who's, I mean, the image in RP is not inside any minimal prime of RP, but unfortunately C is inside some minimal prime of R. That could happen in priority, okay? Let's say C is inside P1 to Pi, but not in Pi plus one and Pn, something like that. And so now the trick is that, uh, so now, uh, we pick C prime inside the intersection of okay, so PJ, J equals to I plus one to N uh, minus the union of PI. Oops, let's say PJ, J equals to one to I. Okay, so this is by a standard prime avoidance. So you pick a C prime inside all the other minimal primes, but not inside P1 to Pi. And you replace C by C plus C prime. And um, replace C by C plus C prime. And the advantage of doing this is that, so there are something you have to, so there are two things you have to check. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, C plus C prime is not inside any minimal prime of all, right? Because well, C is not inside these PJs and you add, so C is not inside like minimal prime from I plus one to N. And the thing you add, right, is inside the other minimal primes. So C plus CI is not in the other minimal primes, but this is also not inside any P1 to PI because, you know, C prime is not in these minimal primes, but, but C is inside this P1 to PI. So this is the first thing you have to check. And the second thing you have to check is that uh, so C plus uh, C plus C prime have the same image at C inside our localized P. Okay, so maybe I leave this as an easy exercise. So check, you have to track this. Um, well, maybe let me just search C prime. So the image of C prime in our localized P is zero. Okay, so this is just basically by the way we, we choose C and C prime. You note that uh, none of this uh, uh, P1 to PI, none of these PIs could be contained in P because, uh, because we, we, we assume the image of C in our local P is not inside any minimal prime of RP. So P1 to PI cannot be uh, contained in P. You have to use this fact to, uh, to show this, okay? All right, but anyway, so the idea is that uh, you can always pick your, uh, you can modify your C, you replace C by C plus C prime to assume that this C uh, is not inside any minimal prime of R and the image of C plus C prime and the image of C are the same in our localized of P. And so then once you do that, so now your user assumption, uh, as I said, then it's very easy, but since so things, R is strongly F regular, uh, you can split off this C. So uh, there exists E bigger than zero, uh, such that uh, R to F E lower star R, sending one to F E lower star C uh, splits as a map of R modules. Okay, and then we'll just localize that. So and uh, localize uh, this splitting, uh, we get the RP linear map. Sending uh, it was RC to one. Okay, so this direction is uh, 
is the easy direction. So uh, as I said, the only subtlety is that you have to modify your C a little bit. Okay, so that's... All right, so now we prove the converse. So this is a really interesting direction. So, so now I'm gonna assume uh, all the uh, localizations of R are, are strongly irregular, and I want to show R itself is strongly irregular. Okay, so let's see why is that. Okay, so now, we prove the converse, okay? So now uh, we fix a C inside R, uh, not in any minimal prime. Okay, uh, okay so, so now this time our assumption is that, so we know, uh, For every uh, p inside spec r, um, there exists um, e bigger than zero. Well, let me just emphasize this little e may depend on p. Okay. Uh, such that RP to F lower star RP sending one to F lower star C splits. Okay, so uh, we want to show, okay, so now our assumption is that all the localizations of R are strongly irregular. We want to show R is strongly irregular. So fix C not in any minimal prime. So of course this time, since C is not in any minimal prime of R, uh, the image of C inside RP is not in any minimal prime of RP. So you can use, your, use our assumption. So for every P, you can find E, but E may depends on P such that this map sending one to F lower star C split. So this is our assumption that R local P is strongly irregular. Okay, so now, uh, so you want to sort of spread out this this splitting, and what do I mean? So since R is at finite, okay, so uh, if you look at the harm set, so harm RP, F lower star RP, RP, so this is equal to, uh, Rp tensor R, harm F lower star R, R. Okay, so this is the easy fact that harm commutes with flat phase change if the first module is finally presented, but our, our rings are no theory and everything, I mean, finally, finally generated is the same as finally presented. And we, our assumption is that this is the finally generated R module. So we are using the F finiteness here, okay? So once we have that, this is a flat phase change, so you can, uh, it just says the uh, harm R, I feel it was R, R, tensor with RP is the same as you just tensor each thing inside with RP. So you get, you get this, okay, so sorry. All right, so, but the, what was the upshot? The upshot is that, uh, so, okay. So we know that there's a map, uh, okay. So we know like the map uh, RP to I feel it RP is sending one to, we know this map splits, okay? So that means there is a map here uh, sending uh, F e lowers RC to what, okay? Uh, and so now every map here is essentially, well, I'm, what I'm just telling you here is every map here is essentially coming from a localization of a map of this level, okay? So the conclusion you get is that, so there, um, There exists a map V inside harm R, F e lower star R, R, uh, sending. So you, you know, like you have a map here such that after you localize, it is a split. It's gonna send F e lower star C to one. And what you know, you know that before you localize, it must send F e lower star C to something outside P to uh, F 
which is outside P. Because after you localize, you want this map to be surjective. I mean, if you lower RC, you have to send to a unit. So before you localize, you know, like it must send F lower RC to something outside P. Because otherwise, it's, it's, it's after you localize, it's not going to be a splitting anymore. Okay, so you this is what you can do. All right, but then uh, what you know is that our localized F to F e lower star, our localized F sending uh, one to F e lower star C splits. Okay, so, well, this is, sorry, I'm already running out. So I will stop after I finish the proof of this lemma. So uh, the point is that, so you, you, you have a map from F e lower star to R sending F e lower star C to some F not inside P. So as long as you localize this map at F, so uh, the map is gonna send in F e lower star C to a unit. So in particular, this map sending one to F e lower star C splits. Okay, so uh, now, so for every P, inside spec R, we can find F uh, okay. So for every P inside spec R, we can find such an F uh, in particular. Well, maybe I should I should really say an FP here because F depends on P. And F is not in P. Not inside P. And hence, uh, if you take the union of all the uh, basic open sets, uh, so that's equal to spec R. Because if you take the union of all these basic open sets, it's you know it really contains all the prime ideals of R. So this is uh, equal to spec R. And so now since spec R is quasi uh, is quasi compact, this is the very first thing we learn in commutative algebra about the spectrum of commutative rings. So hence there exists like F1, F2 to Fn such that the union of the basic open sets is uh, spec R and for each Fi, there exists uh, an Ei bigger than zero such that the map uh, R looks at the Fi to Fei lower star Fi sending one to Fei lower star C split. Okay. Because this Fi is coming from some P, so we uh, we have them. Okay. And so now uh, I so this is an, a, another exercise question. So now it's easy to see that you. You just pick the E that are larger than all these EIs, so then the map will be split. So it is then uh, easy to check. I leave this as an exercise uh, that for E0, which is the maximum of this E1, uh, EN. So the map R to Fe zero lower star R sending one to Fe zero lower star C splits as R mod. Okay. So this has finished the proof. So let me just explain a little bit about the last step. So the point is that if you pick this E zero, okay, so the, the so, so this exercise that I assign you is that, so if this map sending, uh, if you have some EI sending like uh, one to FEI lower star, oops, there's a typo, RFI. 
So if you have some EI such that R to FEI lower star sending one to whatever FEI lower star C splits, so then you can always enlarge the EI. You can, you can pick for, for every like E bigger than this EI, the map R to FE lower star R sending one to FE lower star C also splits, okay? And so now basically if you pick, so now the upshot is that if you pick this E zero to be the maximum of all these, so then the map from R to FE zero lower star R sending one to FE zero lower star C, it splits after you localize at all at each of the F I, okay? And then again, it's an easy exercise that, uh, you know, if you know it, it splits, after you localize at each fi, so then it have to be split because uh, uh, you know you, the obstruction. Just look at the harm set. The, the, so if if it does not split, then the image have to contain in some maximum ideal. So you just look localize it at that maximum ideal. But our fi's uh, they uh, uh, they cover the spectrum, so you can't find any maximum ideal. Okay. So anyway, so I'm a little bit in rush. So maybe this. Last step requires some exercise, but anyway, so we uh, we we proved that the uh, strongly f regular ring is a uh, uh, tracking the strongly f regular is a local property. Okay, sorry, I I will stop here today. I'm not entirely sure who the chair of the session is, so let's clap for Ling Xuan. Are there any questions? There's one in the chat. In the statement, can we replace spec R by max spec R? Uh, yeah, you can, you can replace, that's a good point. Because, because if you if you if you know it, it's true for maximum ideals. You also know it's true for prime ideals for any prime because it localizes. Yeah, it's the same information. I do have another question. So this shows that strongly f regular localizes, but we say that weakly f regular doesn't, and we know that Cole Macaulay does. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, weakly f regular, like we don't know. It, you, I mean, like you don't does. know, right? That's what I'm right. sorry. Yeah. But what about F rational? F rational I mean, localizes too. Okay. Uh, Do you need to assume that the ring is local? Yeah, I was. Uh, no. Uh, wow. Well, okay. So F rational. Okay. So first of all, I don't know whether people have already defined F rational, but um, so for me, like F rational was for, you first define F rational for uh, for local rings. You and then, it yeah, and then you just define it. Okay, for general, for, for non-local rings, I will just define it to be like all the localizations are f rational. Because, I well, I don't know how to define f rational with. Well, maybe you can. You can use the canonical, but yeah. But in, in either case, you, I think f rational is also a local property, at least under some excellent type assumption. But it will be uh, f rational. Is, yeah, it's 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 a local property. Yeah. Yeah, Florian will, will, of course, go over that in a lot more detail. Right. I think the next lecture will be focusing on um, F rational rings. Thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, then let's thank Ling Chuan one more time and we'll resume again on Wednesday.